Hello students, welcome to the SketchUp 8 tutorial on 3D solids and 2D nets. Today we are going to draw a trapezoidal prism and open that solid up to reveal its two-dimensional net. Let's open SketchUp 8. Let's immediately save this file. Let's do an initial save. So let's go to File, Save As. When you save in SketchUp 8, you have to change in the Save In window, click on your student number. Click the down arrow and click on your student number. Or you can locate your student number from the side panel here. So I want you to change the name, the file name, to Trapezoidal Prism. Trapezoidal Prism. Let's click Save. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. So let's click on the zoom tool, the magnifying glass. I don't want to zoom in at the origin. I want to zoom in a little bit away from the girl. So I'm going to position my magnifying glass about there, and then I want to zoom in. Okay. I want to look at this spot from the front view. So let's go up to the camera menu, choose standard views, and choose front. So I'm looking at uh, the girl's feet directly from the front. So I just want to pan over, use the hand tool. And remember, I want to draw the object a little bit away from the girl over here. So as I pan over, I want to line up this red, this red origin line with the back uh, horizon line. So I want to position it so those two lines meet the best that I can. Okay? All right. So let's see if I can do a better job here. There we go. Okay, so I want to draw a rectangle that, that stands straight up. So I want to click on the rectangle tool, and I want to start it right on that red uh, origin line. Okay, I'm going to click once, and I'm going to start dragging outwards, but do not click a second time. I want you to type in 40cm, comma, space, 25cm. So look in the dimensions window in the bottom right hand corner to make sure that your dimensions match with mine. 40 cm comma space 25 cm. Click enter. So that should create the rectangle. So remember my goal is to create a rectangle that stands straight up. We're not drawing a shape on the ground this time. So let's orbit and make sure that that rectangle is standing straight up. And yes it is. Perfectly done. Okay, so I want to orbit around now to the front view again. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so it's not exactly the front, so let me see if I can orbit and get a better view right from the front. Okay, now if I'm stuck, I can go to camera, standard views, and front again, and that should give me the perfect view. Okay, so let's use the pencil tool. Click on the pencil tool. And what we're going to do is, we're going to start in the top left-hand corner. And what I want you to do is, I want you to come over a little bit. Okay, I want you to make sure that the pencil is on the edge. Click once, and then I want you to draw down to the uh, opposite endpoint on the ground. Okay, so this time, I want you to start in the top right-hand corner, and I want you to come inwards a little bit farther than uh, the distance you went inwards from here. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to come in a little bit farther. I'm going to click once and hold my mouse, and I'm going to drag down to the opposite vertex. Okay, so now let's use the eraser tool. Let's click on this edge here to get rid of it. Let's click on this edge. Let's click on this edge, and let's click on this edge. So now we have an irregular trapezoid here. Now remember, the whole point of this video tutorial is to create a trapezoidal prism. So let me pan over, and let me orbit a little bit so I can see that trapezoid a little bit on an angle. Let's click the push-pull tool. Let's click on the front face and start pushing backwards, but do not click a second time. I want you to type in 35cm and then hit enter. So that should set the depth of our trapezoidal prism to 35 centimeters. So have a look at it. 
Okay, very unusual, but very nice looking shape. Okay, so let's label all the faces of this solid. So we're going to need the large tool set down the left hand side. So if you don't have it, you have to go to view, toolbars, and choose large tool set. Make sure there's a check mark beside large tool set. Okay, once you have the large tool set activated, let's look for 3D text tool. So let's click on 3D text. Where it says enter text, I want you to type in front, capital F, and the rest of the letters lowercase. I'm using a font called Arial Narrow because it's a very skinny font. I've changed it to bold to make it stand out a bit. And I want to set the height at 3 cm, 3 centimeters. Can you carefully type that in where it says height? For extruded, I want you to make sure that it says 0, 0.00. So if it doesn't, all you have to do is type in 0 centimeters. Don't touch anything else. And I want you to click Place. So when you click Place, you'll see you'll have control of that 3D lettering. So I want you to position it in the center of that, of that front trapezoid and click to paste it on that face. So let's orbit around and make sure that it's pasted right on the front of that face. And you can see that it is. All right, so now I want to look at it from the side. So let's repeat these steps. Let's click on 3D Text Tool. Next, I want you to type in Side. Leave everything the same because it will remember the previous settings the last time you used 3D text. So let's click in, let's click on place and let's place that in the center of that side face and click to paste it there. All right, let's orbit around to the back. Let's click on 3D text tool. Let's type in back and then click place. All right, let's position it in the center of that trapezoid and click. Let's orbit around. 3D text tool. Let's type in side. Click place. Let's position it in the center of that side and click. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to orbit around. Let's uh, get away from the girl there. And let's orbit around so I can see that shape. So where did my shape go? There it is. OK. So let me zoom out a bit. And let's label the top. Click on the text 3D text tool. Type in top. And then click place. Place it on the top face. And then we have one more label, don't we? We have to look at it from the bottom. So let's click on 3D text tool and type in bottom. Click place and place it on the bottom. Don't worry if it looks like it's upside down, no problem. Okay, let's orbit around to the front. So now what we have to do is we have to create groups. So I'm gonna explain what that means as we go along. So let's save it, it's a good time to save. Okay, let's click on the selection arrow tool and let's click on the front face. Then on your keyboard, I need you to look in the bottom left hand corner for the control key. I want you to hold the control key down, hold it down for all of these steps. I'll tell you when to let go. So hold the control key now, push it down and you'll notice that beside your selection arrow, there will be a plus sign. So what this means is it will allow you to highlight more than one object at a time. So now that we've highlighted the face, let's click on the lettering and let's click on the four edges that surround that trapezoid. Then let go of the control key. Then with your mouse, use the right button, right mouse click and choose make group. Click on make group. So now everything associated with the front face is part of one group. So it will react, it will act together as one unit. All right, let's orbit around and let's do the same thing for the side. So let's repeat those steps. Let's click on the selection arrow. Let's click on the side face. Hold the control key, hold it down until I say let go. Click on the lettering and click on the four edges 
that surround that face. Don't forget the bottom edge. Let go of the control key. Right click and choose make group. All right, let's orbit around to the back side. Let's change tools to the selection arrow tool. Let's click on the back face. Hold the control key. Click on the lettering. And then click on the four edges of that side. Let go of the control key. Right click and choose make group. Let's orbit around to this side. Let's click on the side. Hold the control key. Click on the lettering. And click on the four edges around the outside. Right click and choose make group. Let's orbit to the top. Let's click on the top face, hold the control key, click on the lettering, click on the four edges around the outside. Right click and choose make group. Okay, so let's orbit around. Now, once we finish the top, you might be thinking, okay, we've got one more face to go and that's the bottom. And you'd be right. However, because we're not actually going to move the bottom, we don't have to create a group. But if you want to, for extra practice, that would be fine. All right, so we've created all the groups, so let's save. Okay, so I want to look at my trapezoidal prism from the front, from an angle, so I can see some of the top and some of the side. And what I want to do is I want to zoom out. Now, normally we want to zoom in, but I want to zoom out because I also want to be able to see the ground in front of the trapezoid. Okay, so the most exciting part of the tutorial is coming up, and it's the most uh, tricky, but we'll get a lot of practice at it, and it's really not that hard. All right, let's click on the Selection Arrow tool, and let's click on the Front Group. We're going to use the rotate tool. So the rotate tool is uh, the picture of the two spinning red arrows. So I want you to click on the rotate tool. And then once you bring it onto your sketch, you'll see that it looks like a protractor. So I want you to position the rotate tool on the bottom right hand corner of that front trapezoid. And you'll see that it will say endpoint in group. I want you to click and hold the mouse button. Do not let go of the mouse button. Hold the mouse button and trace along that bottom edge till you get to the opposite left bottom corner of the trapezoid. Line it up so it says end point in group and then let go of the mouse button. That's the most important step in the whole tutorial. Now it should allow you as you position your cursor on the face it will say on face in group. Click once and then pull downwards towards the ground. When you think you've got it lying flat on the ground, click a second time to stop the rotation. All right, so we have to orbit to make sure that that front face is laying flat on the ground. You see how it's laying flat on the ground now. Okay, so that was the most important step. If you didn't get it, just rewind and repeat. Keep working at it, you'll get it. So now that we've done it once, we get a lot of practice at it. So let's repeat the steps. Let's click on the selection arrow tool. Let's click on the side group. Let's click on the rotate tool and let's position the rotate tool in the bottom right hand corner to get end point in group. Click and hold the mouse button. Drag across the bottom edge to get to the opposite point where it says end point in group and then let go of the mouse button. Then click on, sorry about that, then click on the side and then pull downwards towards the ground. Line it up with that red line. Okay? Sorry, my mouse is being very sticky here. All right, and then click to end the rotation. Make sure you orbit around to make sure that that edge, that face is lying flat on the ground. You see that it is. Don't worry about this uh, skeleton box around the group. Don't worry about that. Okay, let's repeat it for a third time. Let's click on the selection arrow tool. Let's click on that face. Let's click on the rotation tool. Bottom right hand corner. Click on end point in group. Click and hold. Drag across to the opposite vertex. End point in group and let go. 
click on that face and start pulling it down towards the ground and click. Okay, so we've got two faces to go. So you might be thinking, well, I'm just going to rotate this face down. But if you do that, this top will remain floating in air. It actually looks very cool, but it doesn't help us with the net. So we have to change our strategy slightly here. So let's click on the selection arrow tool and let's click on the side. Then hold the control key and then click on the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate these two faces together. All right, let's click on the rotate tool. Let's start in the bottom right hand corner, end point and group, click and hold, go across, trace along the ground to the bottom left hand corner, end point and group, let go of the mouse, click on the side and start rotating down. You'll see how both of the sides are rotating now as one unit click to end the rotation. Now you can see we have one more side to rotate. Let's click on the selection arrow. Let's click on this last uh, group. Let's click on rotate and let's rotate that last face. And then move it towards the ground. All right, let's orbit around so we get to see what this net looks like. Let me zoom out a bit. And that's what the net looks like for a trapezoidal prism. So let's do a final save. Let's go to File, Save. So this concludes this video tutorial on how to draw a trapezoidal prism and its net. Please call Mr. Ueda over to show him your project. Thanks for watching. Bye.